morning. If you're not in the house, come on in the house. <laughs> uh, always great, great to be here on Sunday morning. Awesome to, to see all your faces and be here to worship the Lord with you this morning. Um, in typical Flasco family fashion, we are gonna, we're, we're not 100% ready, but we're going to do this. We're doing the Advent candle this, uh, this, this Sunday, but we're going to, I wanted to just take a moment and make sure that, that at least as a church family, we always understand what, what we're doing as a church. There is a purpose uh, to, to doing this. And um, uh, you could possibly say this is a tradition, but it, it is something that has a purpose. And the purpose is that we take some time to focus and prepare our hearts and our minds uh, to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the coming of Jesus, right? And um, we're going to take the next four weeks and just uh, take, take just a few moments on Sunday morning to help get our minds and our hearts in the right place, uh, thinking about how important this is, this, this, this Christmas season that we say we celebrate. So I hope you'll do that with us uh, as we take the time, listen to the scriptures that are read, listen to the readings. And uh, I know I need help with it. I need help putting the distractions out of my mind and, and, and focusing on the Lord. And, I, and that's really, that's, that's what this is in an effort to do. So I'm going to ask my family to come up with me. Um, and before they read, I, uh, something hit me this week speaking about the birth of Jesus. And I'll tell you, it's just, it, was, it was something powerful to me. And I'm almost ashamed to tell you, church, as a, as a believer of 20-some years, that I, I, I kind of... I kind of missed this, and so I'm going to share it with you, and if you haven't missed it, praise God, and if you have missed it, you'll learn something, so it's, it's a good thing. Um, we know the story, the Christmas story, and, and that Joseph, uh, when he found out that his soon-to-be wife was, was pregnant, he was going to let her, let her go <laughs> and quietly divorce her, and the scripture says something here that's just so powerful. It's in Matthew chapter 1, in just a couple of verses, starting in verse 20. Uh, this is talking about Joseph. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And I was good up to there. The scripture says, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. It caught me, and in a, in a, in I was honestly, I was doing a devotional, and at the birth announcement of Jesus, it wasn't just that he was God's son. That's huge. But his purpose was in there. He came to save us from our sins. And I'll tell you, I, 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 read, this, I read this Christmas story to my kids at Christmas morning. And it's like we breeze over this. This is, this is purpose. That's why we celebrate Christmas. And so I just, that's why we can do this first week is about hope. And it's because of that, it's because of that truth and that statement, right, that we can have hope. All right, Luke. This is the first Sunday in Advent. Today we light one purple candle. This is the candle of hope. Advent is a time of waiting and hoping. We wait for the day when we celebrate again the birth of Jesus. We hope that everyone will come to know God and worship God. When we look at the first candle, we remember God's promise. God promised to send a Savior to the people. When we listen to our scripture reading, we hear what the prophet Isaiah wrote about God. God is the potter who molds us. We know that the gospel witness is one that helps us understand that God is loving and just. God brings peace. This gives us hope. We anticipate again the birth of the baby Jesus. Remembering that Jesus helps us know God's love for us. Be reading from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you this morning for Jesus. God, I'm so grateful for the promises uh, that we get to claim as believers, God, because of what he's done. God, I'm so grateful that he died for me, that he took the punishment of my sin, God. And uh, Lord, that because of that, that I have hope. I pray, God, that you'd teach us as a people uh, to want to truly just share the hope that's inside of us uh, with others. God, I pray that you'd use this morning to encourage the hope that should be in us, God, because of your love. I pray, Lord, that, that uh, you would just use every moment of this service from this point forward, God, to speak to our heart. Uh, every one of us, I think, can acknowledge we need to change to be more like you. And so, God, I pray that you do that in this place. Help us to put aside things that get in the way, uh, to hear your voice, Lord, and then to allow you to work in our lives. I know that you want to do that, Father. I believe that with all my heart, and I just pray, God, that you help us to do it as a people. Use Mark, use the message. Lord, use it all. Use our singing, our prayers. Uh, we, just, we just love you and trust you, God, with our life. If there's someone here that doesn't know you today, God, I pray that they'd have the hope we have uh, because of the truth of your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. We're one? Okay. <laughs> good morning. It's so good to see you this morning. You know, uh, I was in this church this week, and I looked back through there, and it was so bland. Just red seats, you know just there. I want you to know how much better it looks this morning because there's faces back there, there's people back there, there's hearts back there that we've grown to love and to know and what a great time it is to be in the Lord's house. Amen? Amen. You know, the first song we're going to sing this morning says, Joy to the world, the Lord is born. Right? Have you ever thought about of all the things that the world takes joy in, and it's so fleeting and passing. Now, I don't know, some of you may watch college football. Um, I'm kind of addicted too, I, you know, just kind of add that. But I've learned something. In every football game, there's some people real happy, right? But there's also some people real sad. And the people that's real happy this week may not be so happy next week. Right? And that's kind of the way it is with all the joys of this world. They're here and they pass. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have joy. You might have joy abundantly and joy everlasting. So let's stand and praise the Lord as we sing together. Joy to the world, the Lord is born.
sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt you, but I noticed some of you were a little hesitant about singing. And, and, and part of that might be you're afraid you may hit a wrong note, right? Well, don't let that disturb you, okay? If you hit a real bad note, just look at your neighbor and kind of look like this. And everybody will think it's them instead of you, right? Okay, you got it? All right, this is the Lord's house. And he said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let's lift our voices as we sing the rest of this song, okay? given, and that is to be able to look at faces. And I want to tell you, there were some beautiful, especially children's faces as they sang this morning, and bless my heart. I hope your heart was blessed also. Brother Wayne. Good morning again to everyone. It's a blessing to be here to worship the true and risen Savior in Jesus Christ our Lord. And we just thank you so much for this day that's come. We thank you for the Advent service this morning. What a blessing that is for this time of year. Um, I'm here mainly to talk to you about announcements. And before I get into announcements, I want you to understand something. This church is a very mission-minded church. We have two men that have gone to a mission this week, and they're going to come forward right now and share just a touch of what went on in Kentucky for Hope of Appalachia. Thanks, Brother Wayne. <laughs> Man, praise God. Amen. I just want to thank the church uh, for all your love and support and prayers. Uh, without the church and um, your help, we wouldn't be able to do this mission on uh, Hope for Appalachia. Um, we went to the public schools in Eastern Kentucky and um, shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, we, our mission this uh, time of year is to go into the kindergarten classrooms because we haven't met the kindergartners yet. They're new to the school year. and. Um, we actually give them um, kindergarten bags that have uh, some little toys in it, coloring books and stuff, toothbrush, toothpaste, hats and gloves. But our main mission is to tell them the true meaning of Christmas. And we read a Christmas uh, book to them that talks about the birth of Jesus. And, um, and we share with like a nativity scene. Um, sometimes the kids help us with that. And um, it's just a blessing to go into those classrooms and to do that uh, for those kids. I was sharing with our youth Sunday school um, how important it is to go out and share the gospel. And you go into some of these schools and um, 
and uh, the kids don't know, you, you don't hear Jesus. Um, you know, I go in there and um, I get them a little wound up at first, and then I start talking about, uh, you know, the holiday coming up. And they all know that Christmas is coming. Um, but then you ask them, you know, what, what is Christmas truly about? What is the true meaning of Christmas? And, um, and a lot of times, you don't hear nothing about Jesus. They shout out Santa, the Christmas gifts, the presents. Even heard this year, the Grinch. They never heard that one before. <laughs> uh, that was the first one for me, but uh, some of the schools we go to, uh, as soon as I ask that question, there's five or six in there to shout Jesus, Jesus' birthday. Um, I praise God for that, but also when, when you don't hear that is how important it is that God is, allows us to be there to share the true meaning of Christmas. Um, like I said, our main goal is the kindergartens this time of year. Um, God's laid in my heart years ago. Of course, uh, when I go even in the fall trip, uh, I want to see all the kids. You know, there's 400 some kids in there that uh, I've been loving them for a while. I want to see them all. And um, God continues to bless me and to open up doors. Um, we were able to go through a whole middle school, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, from classroom to classroom to classroom. I spoke about the birth of Jesus to the cross, down on the cross to forgive us of our sins, and then uh, our hope uh, to be with him for eternity, man. And uh, to be able to do that after, you know, we weren't even supposed to be doing that, but God wanted us there for a reason, right? And he provided a, a way for it. Uh, also, uh, I call it, uh, my mom calls it Matt Street Ministry. Um, we were on the street. My and Bill's plan was we were going to travel Monday, all day, set up on the street Tuesday, set up on the street Wednesday, and then uh, I had so much stuff, I probably needed, a, I thought I needed two weeks to give it all away, as much stuff as I had. And um, on the way there, of course, uh, I just, I can't wait to be there. I, we go to a Food City parking lot, it's a grocery store in the parking lot. And um, the grocery people, the people, managers, they know me. And um, I couldn't wait to get there. And of course, our plan was not to set up that Monday. We come down Black Mountain. It was snowing coming down Black Mountain. But then the sun came out when we got in the lynch. And still going to drop the trailer off, I told Bill, I said, man, I think God wants us to go to that parking lot. And we're talking, it was like 28 degrees. And uh, I said, I don't know. God wants us to go there now, Bill. Bill said, let's go. We went down there, dropped the, chip, dropped the, well, we parked the truck. I went to find the managers, couldn't see nobody. They were busy. Came back outside, the managers coming in. I said, hey, man, that's my truck and trailer right there. The manager said, I know who you are, man. Do your thing. I said, hey, amen. So we set up, and um, we stayed there. We got there at 2 o'clock. We stayed there until 4.30. And uh, passed out hundreds and hundreds of coats, uh, blankets, socks. Uh, they were needy, needy people. And um, next morning, we were there at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we left at 4.30. And we left at 4.30 because we were out of stuff. And I'm talking, we were there all day. I think Bill sat down one time. And we were busy the whole day. Uh, you know, up to 20, 30 people sitting out there um, collecting coats, hats, and gloves, all kinds of blankets, all kinds of stuff. And um, I just praise God for it all, and um, thank you all for y'all's prayers. And I can sit here and tell a story after story uh, all day, but uh, Pastor wants to get preaching, so. <clears throat> yeah, I want to, you know, a lot of people gave us stuff that, in the past, we've been there times, and it just haven't been worked out, so we end up giving it to the Freedom Center so they could get to the community. But God opened up the door this time, and he had it cold. So these, these people were coming around. They had, didn't have warm jackets. So he, it was a cool day, and on Tuesday, it was 17 in the morning. We got up, and we went out to check out some stuff at the farm and found out the vehicle that I gave him a year ago was having problems. So we came back in town and set up, and I got some parts from the auto store, and we... Worked all that day and we got rid of everything. So Wednesday morning we went out to the farm again, cold. But we got out there, we were able to solve that problem. We had some time left and got back to Solomon's Porch where we stay and the other team started coming in. So we unloaded them trailers, but it just, God gave us the, the time there, you know, like, like Matt talks about, we got in the, 
the mid-schoolers this time, which that God gave us a new resource person there that opened that door up because we interrupted their classes and took some time and they were gracious and they were glad they were there to do that. They've set it up so we can come back in the spring when we need to, but, but God's opened up that. And some other schools, the same situation was there, that the resource people are the ones that kind of lent us into schools. And we had some problem areas in some of the schools, but God opened up new resource people that the doors open, so we're going to come in it. So it's just a blessing, and it gave us the skills to fix a truck which needed was needed there to be used in Kentucky, and they put 10,000 miles on that truck in the last year. They've been using it heavy, so it's glad that we could come and do that, and and still, by the end of that week, we were both tired. We, I couldn't stay awake coming back, and I, I'd have to trip back here to, to I couldn't stay awake. I was sleeping. Fortunately, he was drinking some drink and kept him awake, but it's a good thing <laughs> because because he wasn't going to get any help from me, but God kept God God took care of us and got us back here, but he blessed us very much and gave us the strength to do what he called us there to do. And Amen. praise God for that. Amen. And and all you support. We knew that, Matt. We know you. We know better than that. There you go. Praise God. Testimony. Without testimony, how do you have salvation? And if you don't live by the word of God, right? Announcements, Miss Dawn. Um, in case you didn't remember or don't know, there is no first meal today. Sorry. But we're going to have dinner next week, 530, before the Bentons have a concert at 630. So if you want to bring cold or dessert items um, in the morning, uh, Kathy and I will be in the kitchen collecting those um, Sunday school before church. Um, and if you bring any hot dishes, um, we'll be in the kitchen at 5 o'clock. We're going to eat promptly at 530, so don't be late. Just making sure you got that eye contact there. Um, and then we're going to get everybody cleaned up, and we're going to come up, and everybody's going to get to enjoy the concert. Um, the 20th, the children's um, play reception, the sign-up sheet is um, at the visitor center. Um, so if everybody would just sign up for, you know, something like finger dessert, we'd appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, Dawn. Save me from reading all that. I appreciate that much, Lee. Uh, Sure. Uh, we're already scheduled for our study for this is a week before we used to be using the school Good Friday preaching the other guy. And um, I just pray that uh the, the, you start praying to see that God wants you to be a part of this mission coming up. It's um the week before Easter. And um if you can't do the whole week, uh pray about Friday. Uh last year we took a whole school to a football field and played with the right angle. It's on Good Friday and Chalice will do the same thing with the kids this year. So just pray about that and come see. As you can tell, Hope Appalachia is a big deal. Uh, and what these men do. But it's reaching someone who looks so forward to them coming and sharing Jesus Christ. Not always just to bring them things. They want to hear the word. I wish there was a desire in this county. <laughs> That people wanted to hear the word, you know. That's what it's all about, the word. The word became flesh, didn't it? dwelt among us. We done did the Christmas thing already, see? <laughs> Praise God. I see where Grace uh, thanks our church for the th uh, three Thanksgiving boxes uh, plus miscellaneous items that were provided. And there were 165 boxes given out this year. And we support Grace, this church does on our budget in separate ministries, and their in, uh, year-end report has been posted on the bulletin board out here, in the, like you're going down to the fellowship hall, uh, for everyone to see where Grace uses funds donated to them. Thanks, everyone. And I know that Gail plays a part of that, Doug and Annie. And we just thank God that we allow Jesus to use us for what we're called to do. There's a calling on every one of you sitting here this morning. We're all called to serve. Don't you ever forget that. 
when you say I'm bored, I don't have nothing to do, brother, you call this pastor right here or call one of these deacons, we'll, we'll get you something to do, trust me. We'll have fun doing it too. It, it's just a blessing, blesses your heart. Um, scripture reading, moment. December is time of fellowship, right? More of it. Meal time. December the 15th from 11 to 1230. One more thing, Wayne, before you have Sure. Got a lot going on, I guess, Jordan. Um, our Sunday school class would like to host the church for a time of uh, prayer and worship this um, um, December 17th between 7 to 8. I'm going to talk with Dawn and see if we can get it in the count in the um, bulletin. But it's, it's just going to be a time where we can come to the church, kind of get quiet before God, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Um, very simple time, where, uh, you know, just I, I just ask that you come with an open mind and just be open to what the Holy Spirit is going to do with that. So December 17th between 7 and 8 o'clock. Thanks. Anyone else? I'll learn to say that one of these days. I'm like Doug now. I don't do this too often. I'll let all the rest of the young guys do it. I'm not used to doing this. But I'm here. So you have to stick with it today. You know what I mean? All right. Let's take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah. Chapter 7. Verses 13 and 14. When you get there, look up here. Everybody's good. All right. Now, this is the sign of the virgin birth, Emmanuel, God with us. And he said, hear you now, O house of David, it is a small thing for you to worry men, but will you worry my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Before we pray this morning, I think I'm going to do the announcements and then we'll close in prayer before we go into the next, to the uh, offertory hymn. Uh, we've had a lot of sickness in this area and there's been uh, a few deaths in recent days. Uh, my son, his father-in-law, passed away yesterday. Marvin Knight. Not many of you would know him. He's 90, he was 95 years old. Uh, there's others. Uh, one, one singer for the Dean family who plays guitar and sings. I do not know his name. Um, anyway, he had pneumonia this week, went into the hospital, and he's had three heart attacks since he's been there. God knows his name. That's the main thing I'm getting at. You know? What's that? Uh, there's needs all the time. There's people in need. You're in need. I need. And the biggest reason I think that if a man comes to church with a need, he gets more out of it. If you have to come to church, I don't know about that. Sometimes we say, well, I want to go. But man, when you, when you have a need to go, that blames you to you want to feel God. You want to feel the presence of the Lord. And I pray that's where we are today. Wanting to feel Jesus move in my life. Amen? Amen? Yeah. That's a secret to success in Christianity. It's not an easy thing to do. It's to be obedient and truthful to the word of God. Prayer list, always important, and there's a lot of names on this prayer list, and I was looking at it this morning, there's names that probably should be removed from the list temporarily because they're well and things that are going well with their lives right now, except they don't come to church. And uh, matter of fact, I'll probably get with Dawn after church today, and we'll 
take a look at some of these names. Uh, there's, I love the names on here when they have a need, they need prayer, they need God to work in their life. That's what this list is about. It's not just a list here to say, well, I got my name in the bulletin. That's not what it's for. But we say this. Sometimes we don't get told that people got well or whatever, but some of them we do find out gradually that they're doing much better. But they just, I don't know, indifferent to coming to church. Anyway, any more announcements? Any, anybody got a praise or anything you want to say? Now's the time to do it. Your sister. What's her name? Rachel Lance. Ra Rachel? Rachel Lance. Lance. L-A-N-T-Z. Lance, okay. Anyone else? Uh, okay. Well, unspoken prayer, you know, uh, that's another thing. You don't have to know someone's name. God knows. You know, we know there's a need for, there's a need for people all around the world, not just here, but everywhere that need your prayers. And when we say unspoken, God knows, you know. Anything else? Christmas tree light in Stanersville the other day, and uh, one of the they, they had some community leaders stand up and, and, and speak, you know, brief comments. You know, all, all of them were good. But one of our board of supervisors, um, he stood up and he didn't say all, all he said was scripture, wow. and uh, it was just a blessing and an encouragement to to hear, you know, someone that has something to lose stand up and tell what the true meaning of Christmas is and. Amen. The encouragement for us to do the same thing when we have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So praise God for for the leaders that believe. Well, praise God for people who stand for God. Yeah. You know, sure. not just walk around and say, "Oh, yes, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian," and then, but they have nothing to say about the blessings they've received and what the Lord has done in their life. Testimony and praise God for a man like that with the job he has, you know, to stand before the people that were there and profess Jesus Christ. Praise God for those people. I pray that all of us have that courage to do that. Joshua said, be of a good courage. You know, as far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's what we're here to do today is serve the Lord, you know. Well, let's pray. What do you think? Y'all ready? Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for your many, many blessings that you bestow us with, and we thank you most of all, Father, for, for your life that you came as a, a child, God, and, and as a baby. You were God, but you were a holy man. But, Father, you came to save us from ourselves, to bring us into uh, an everlasting, eternal life with you if we do just only believe Believe and receive what you have brought to us. The terrible penalty that was paid at the cross justifies what you've done in your whole life. You made it, you justified us with your righteousness and you became righteousness for us and you forgave us of our sins and you give us life everlasting when we come to you. But Father, help us to be what you've called us to be. You know, the words... It's so precious to us, and we read these things as, as the Advent scriptures were read today, Father, and as the pastor will preach today on Emmanuel. But as we know, Father, there's a verse of scripture that we have to cling to and hold to, for Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Lord, if we could just cling to that, and knowing there's only one way to heaven, and it's through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Lord, that's a purpose to coming in to, to worship and to Bible study, is to receive the word of God that you can plant it in yourself, that we can be made whole. We know that God controls every breath that we breathe. 
He loves us in every moment that we live. He's always there. He never leaves you or forsakes you. And my God is able to do any and all things in my life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, we ask that you bless this time this morning, that you bless the word, that you bless the singing of the songs, that you bless us for being here today, Father, and let your face shine upon us. Bless us, O Lord, for we need blessings, and thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy that you pour out on us. Lord, we ask you to bless this time as we go to our offertory song this morning. Father, bless those who will give this morning, and Father, bless this pastor who will come and deliver the word of God that you've laid upon his heart. And we just pray, Father, that you won't, everyone here this morning will leave differently than they came in. Filled with the spirit of moving them in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Father, lift us up. We need you, Lord. We need you so bad. We live in perilous times, as the Bible says. We had not seen nothing yet. But, Father, we ask your blessings, deepest blessings, be upon this church family as we worship and praise you together this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Mr. Wilbur.
the coming of our salvation and what you've done for us, what you were going to do for us, so that all might be saved. We ask that you open ears and open hearts to hear the, the message that your servant Mark brings to us today. And ask you to accept these gifts and tithes and offerings and bless them and multiply them and help us to use them in the best way possible. In Jesus' name and prayer. Amen. 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 Maybe see you.
Thank you very much. Parents and Barbara and everybody put that together. Thank you. And family that's here, we appreciate you. I'm going to ask you to turn in your Bible, please, to the book of Matthew, chapter uh, 1, verse 18. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18. And the Lord has blessed us with a lot of things this morning, therefore you need to listen fast, okay? You listen fast, okay. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was the spouse to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." Now all this was done that might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And Joseph, being raised from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and he knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus." Emmanuel is one of those words that, if we're not careful, just kind of passes over by us, and we don't think a whole lot about it other than it's a weird-sounding, pretty name, Emmanuel. But what does it mean? It means simply this, God with us. God with us. I think it really encompasses the whole of the Christmas story. It is the fact that God who created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, now came to earth. Now, I heard it argued backwards and forth about the first coming of Jesus and the fact that he spoke uh, with Old Testament people. That's true. In fact, it was the Word of God who said, let us make, make man in our own image, in our own likeness. Abraham saw his day and was glad. And there were different times that we read that Jesus appeared and, and that he was that rock that was with Israel. But the Christmas story is about when the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. When the Son of God became the Son of Man. When he takes upon himself the form of flesh that he might know all things that we go through. And so it is a beautiful story as we read the story of the manger, and, and we see how Christ comes to this earth, the Son of God, who become the Son of Man. We look at that story with joy. And can you kind of focus and let's see two pictures at once, a picture in heaven and a picture on earth, and see a manger that is filled with the presence of the glory of Christ. But in heaven, there's a spot that's empty. A mother's joy of taking a son and holding her in her arms, but a father who is separated from the son for the first time. Swaddling clothes begin to move with that of a baby boy, but the royal robes of Christ lay silent in heaven. Yes, God became man. And dwelt among us. His name was Jesus, the Savior of us all. But think about this God with us, not just in a manger, not just born 2,000 years ago, but the very presence of God with us in the flesh. When he's in the temple teaching, He's God, but he's also man. They are astounded at his wisdom because he's 12 years old as a child. But yet as God, you realize, no wonder he understood more than they did because he wrote it. It's his word. No one can explain it better than the author. 
when he's walking the streets of Jerusalem and making the blind to see, it is God, but it's also the man Jesus. He was fully God, fully man. When he healed the lepers and made the lame to walk, when he raised the dead, he's there as a man, but he's also there as God. And God is on earth touching individuals and people because he is the son of God and the son of man. When he went to the cross, he went there not just as the God's gift to this world, his son, but he went there as the man who was tested in all points as we are, yet without sin, who willingly became sin for us. And there on that cross was sacrificed as the Lamb of God, that we, his brethren of the flesh, might have forgiveness of sin and be able to live forever. Because you see, when he took our sin, the wages of sin is death. And every man that sinneth must die. Well, he knew no sin, but he became sin when he took my sin. And it was for my sin that he died on the cross. Physical death. As real as any death that any human ever experiences. Knowing pain as any human would know pain. Knowing scorn as any person would know scorn. But for the first and only time in his life, knowing the tragedy of being separated from God. For he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In Revelation, he's called he which is, which was, and which is to come. In that moment of death and the time in the tomb, he was but he rose and is forevermore. So when he rose from the dead, he is the son of God, but he's also the son of man. I know that one day that if Christ does not come first and I'm transformed in a moment of twinkle of an eye, this body one day will lay in a grave. The spirit will be with the Lord, but this body will be in the grave. But I also know that even if I'm in the grave, there's coming a day when I will be raised again in newness of life. I will be raised to be like him forevermore because he died as a man and rose again. But you know, if Jesus, God's son, just walked on this earth 2,000 years ago, performed all the miracles he performed, done all the things that he done, taught all the things that he taught, if he is no longer on earth, what good is that for me? But Emmanuel is not just the Christmas story. It's the eternal story. And it's the present story for today. Now that might be confusing to you, but think about this. Jesus had to have those disciples kind of scratching their head once in a while. You know, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And then he says, if I go away, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. He said, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. But then he said, it's expedient for you that I go away. Now, wait a minute. Why is it expedient that he go away? Well, first of all, if he's going to truly be our Emmanuel God with us, then he's our high priest. And if you've read anything in the Old Testament, you find one that day of atonement that the high priest had to go behind the Holy of Holies, in, into that inter, behind the veil, into the Holy of Holies in the presence of God to make intercession for the people. Well, as we talked about last week, he became our high priest and by his own blood entered into the Holy of Holies of heaven to make intercession for us. Now listen, it's important that the priest be with the people. 
But if he doesn't spend time with God, it makes no difference. So he's still for us. But then beyond that, he said, when I go away, I will pray the Father, and he will send the Comforter, and he will abide with you forever. I know it's kind of hard for us to get our mind around. But God is three persons. God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. If you have the Son, you have the Father. If you have the Son, you have the Holy Ghost. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have the Son and the Father. The three are one. And he said, I will pray the Father, and he will send the Comforter, the Paraclete, the one like unto myself. And now Christ is here. Emmanuel is with us in the person of he, the Holy Ghost. And it's the same Emmanuel, it's the same God that healed on the streets of Jerusalem. This is our present God who's with us today. The same God, the same spirit, the same power that healed Hezekiah is the same God that healed on the streets of Jerusalem. And it's the same God who heals today. But I'm going to tell you. Doctors can attach certain things that's wrong in our body, but doctors cannot make whole. Only God can make whole. Emmanuel with us, he, he heals our sickness, but he also, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, comes to our heart and invites us into relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, the whole reason for Christ's coming was to make us sons of God. He became a son of man that we might become the son of God. As was read previously in, in the scripture that I read, it said, what, his name shall be called Jesus. For what? He shall save his people from their sins. But he said, no man cometh to me without the Spirit. And no man can go to the Father without Christ. And he, the Holy Spirit, is here to make testimony of Jesus Christ. And the reason in your heart that you ever come to a point and place that you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior is because the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart and to your life. And if you haven't come to the Holy Spirit, let me remind you that's what he's here for. To speak to your heart, to convince you that indeed Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that he loved you enough to go to a cross and to die and raise again forevermore. But when he said to his disciples, if I go away, he said this, if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Have you ever really let it enter into your mind and your heart the reality that the same Emmanuel, Jesus, who was born in Bethlehem, one day is going to come and call his people home? The disciples, as Christ was ascending, said they looked and, and they were staring into the heavens, basically saying their eyeballs was popping out. They, they were looking because Christ is, is ascended, and the one that they loved, the one they hoped in, the one they thought was going to come and bring peace eternally on this earth, they, they watched him as, he, as he's gone. And the angel said, why stand you here gazing into the heavens? This same Jesus that went away will come again and receive you unto himself, that where he is, you may be also. Now, there's a lot of implications in that, but I want you to understand. Number one, it says that Christ is coming back for the church. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I don't know everything that's going to take place after that and during that and when that and how it's all going to come about. But I do know this. I'm going to be with him. And he's going to be with me. Emmanuel. God with us. Folks, I know we look on this earth today and we see a lot of turmoil. We wonder what's going to happen in Jerusalem. We wonder what's going to happen uh, in, in Russia. We wonder what's going to happen in China. We wonder what's going to happen in the streets of America. We wonder what's coming about. Well, I'm going to tell you, I don't know, and I can't tell you, but I can tell you this. It'll be worth it all when we see Jesus. It'll be worth it all when he comes. And we don't have to despair. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fear because he is coming again. 
And because of that, we have hope and we have life. Emmanuel, God with us. Yes, God's Emmanuel will be on this earth after the rapture, but he's coming in judgment. And the nations of the world will be judged. Sin will be judged. And there's actually coming a time when sin will finally be defeated and Christ will set up his earthly reign. For a thousand years, this world will be right. Have you ever, you, you ever wished that you could see a day when you get up in the morning and nothing bad happened? I want to tell you, we're going to get up one of these days in a thousand years, nothing bad is going to happen. There's not going to be any more death, no dying, you know. The, the wolf and the lamb will lie down together. The lion will eat straw like an ox. There will be no more wars. Because the governments will finally be straightened out because he'll be king forevermore. For he's king of kings and lord of lords. After that, that old devil that's caused us so much trouble. That beast and pro false prophets that you read about in the book of Revelation scares people. And all those who have rejected Christ will spend an eternity without Emmanuel. And listen, folks, I believe everything the Bible says about hell. I believe the fire is real. I believe the darkness is there. I believe in the weeping, the wailing, the gnashing of the teeth, and the consciousness of those that's there. But I do know this. The most horrible part of being without God is to never know Emmanuel. Because God says, you know, you didn't want me. Now live without me. And there'll be no presence of God forever in hell. But here's the joyous part. For those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, to those who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, then we finally enter into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then we finally enter into that phrase that we call heaven. And, and it's going to be different. It's not going to be that God is with us on earth, but rather we will be with God in heaven. And, and he said there's no use for a temple up there because the Lamb and the Father is there. He is the light of that city. He is always in our presence there. And think about it. Because he has removed all sin, there will be no sickness, no death, no heartache, no tears, no broken hearts. It will be joy in the presence of the Lord. Because finally, he has moved us from our environment to what we made of it, to his environment of what he's made of it. Not that he came to earth, but that we're going to heaven. And here's the thing I want you to understand. You have an opportunity to have Emmanuel. From this morning, from this moment forward, you can have God with you, not just in a philosophical way, not just in a historical way or a future way, but right now today. And from this moment on, you can have Emmanuel in your heart, in your life. You know, that's why he come. In Revelation, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. Right now, in the person of the Holy Spirit, he speaks and knocks at our heart. He says, I want to come in. I want to have fellowship with you. I, I want to be with you from now and forevermore. I come in to be the Lord of your life. I come in to be king. The only reason that he's never admitted is because as an individual we say, I want to be king. I want to do my own thing. I don't want God to tell me what to do. I don't care if he is God. I don't care if he is the one who created and made me. If he's the one who provided the world that I live in and all that I have. 
I'm not going to allow him to rule my life. I'm going to do it my way. Well, if you're rejecting, there comes the time that he says, have thine own way. Depart from me. But now, you can have Emmanuel forever. I want to say to you that know Christ, you've walked with the Lord maybe for many years. Don't despair about what you see happening around you. It's not just peace on earth in Bethlehem. But he said, I want to give you peace where you stand. I want to give you peace as you walk through the fire. I want to give you peace when the storm clouds is rolling. I want to give you peace amidst the storms of your life. I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. You hear everybody wondering about, is this coming to the end of the world? Who cares? Jesus is here. And he'll be with us till he, get, till he comes. I will never leave you. I'll never, ever forsake you. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, why you would ever come to this world after we'd made such a mess of it? I mean, you, you created the world perfectly, and because of our wayward hearts and because of our own independence and our stubbornness, we rebelled against you, we sinned, and the earth became cursed with us. But you didn't give us up. You still loved us. You came down to dwell among us. You came down... Not to just visit. Not just to say what a sorry mess you've made of it. But you came down to save your people from their sins. You came down to pay for all the mess we'd ever made in life. You took it all upon yourself. And bore it on Calvary. I can't understand love like that, Father. But I thank you for it. For loving me, for coming into my heart and being my Emmanuel. Thank you, Father. And Lord, you know every heart here. You know our thoughts, our mind, and where we're at with you. I just pray that if it's your will, by the power of your spirit, if there's any here that live in loneliness and the the dread and the sorrow of being by yourself. That today they might open up their heart and their life and say, Come in, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Father, have your way. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Jesus said. If I, lift, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men into me. As feeble as we are, as weak as we are, I've got some great news for you. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. And whatever mess your life may be in, he says, I want to make it right. I, I want to give you peace. I want to give you joy. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men to me. So this morning we offer you nothing but Jesus, for he's the answer to your life. And we invite you to come as we stand and sing together. The Savior is waiting.
being here. May God bless you. And may we keep in thought and in mind that God is with us, never to leave us. So I'm going to ask if you'll just join us in singing a little song, a little chorus that we have. We, we got it on the screen up there. Okay, 201 if you don't have it. It's just a little chorus that says this, Emmanuel, God with us. He's not just with us in the church, but he's with you on the job, in school, wherever you may be. Let's sing together. Emmanuel. Well, that was a practice session. You've done pretty good. Let's just sing it one time, and it will be through. Okay. in your heart as we live this week. Brother Paul, would you dismiss us, please? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are just grateful for this time. Lord, we pray that we would take your word into the world, Lord, that we would take this light into the world that needs to hear about you. Dear Lord, as we come and we start to prepare for your arrival into um, not only um, your coming, but also, dear Heavenly Father, that um, we just thank you for this time that we're going to celebrate you. And dear Lord, we also pray for courage and strength and might as we go into our workplaces, our schools, um, into our communities, Lord. Help us to um, just brighten the land as we um, go into it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.